Mulligan, roll one. Mr. Mulligan, it's really a pleasure to get to meet you. First of all, congratulations on Blood Brothers, a really fine film. Thank you. And secondly, To Kill a Mockingbird has always been, when I have list my top ten films of all time, mm -hmm. that's one of them. So it's nice to meet you and say thank you for Mockingbird. Thank you. When I list my t top ten, that's Mockingbird. Too. <laughs> I love that picture. You got an Academy nomination for that picture. Mm -hmm. Are you anticipating a, a, a nomination for this one, for Blood Brother? No, I don't. You know, I just stopped anticipating <laughs> a long time ago. All I can do is go off and make the film and make it as best I can and hope for the best. But don't you anticipate it? If, if maybe if you're too, um, well, uh, too shy to make it for yourself, mm. can you anticipate that your actors, perhaps, are going to get some Academy nominations? That I'd love to see. That I'd love to see, because I think that some of the performances, all of the performances in it, uh, are exceptional. Uh, so there's just fine, fine actors. I think it's the best ensemble uh, acting group I've ever worked with. I mean, and that's down the line. Of course, Richard Gere, I think this is the very best thing that we have seen of his on film. And I think he really is just going to be a superstar on the basis of this film. Would you agree? I agree, completely. Of course, Richard hasn't had, you know, the opportunity to do that much. I mean, the small part in, a good part in Looking for Mr. Goodbar. Uh, I've yet to see Terry Malick's film, Days of Heaven, uh, in which Richard stars, which I think is going to be a major film. I know it was a major film, made by a major talent in Terry Malick. Then he has this one, then he's got John Schlesinger's picture, uh, Yanks, that he's now shooting in, in uh, London. Yes, I agree. I think he's on his way to having a fine career and a very successful one. I understand, though, Mr. Mulligan, that when you first tested him that you weren't at all sure he could do this. Now, oddly enough, that wasn't it. When I, before I tested Richard, I had met him. And I felt that he was too old. I knew that he was a fine talent. Again, because I, I rely on the on the on the taste and the kindness of some friends of mine, and they had been talking about Richard. Yeah, you've got to meet Richard. Yeah, you've got to meet this talent. And I met Richard, and considered him for the part of Stoney, but felt he was too old, uh, because Richard is not a boy. He's a strong, young, attractive, bright, intelligent young man. And my initial concept about Stoney was for, for him to be 17, 18. And when Richard and I talked, and we had chatted for a while, and I described the part of Stoney and gave him the age, I said to Richard, I think you're just too strong, too mature, too old for it. And Richard said, you're right, because I can't get down there. <laughs> Not anymore, because Richard was then 27. He's now 28. And we both agreed, and you separated happily and friendly. And I went to New York assuming, I was absolutely positive I'd be able to find a young Italian actor in New York City, and failed. I could not find. I saw 200, 300 young men, and none of them were right. And I went back to Richard, and I said, I'm going to make an adjustment. Stoney is now going to be 1920. Can you get there? And he said, I think so. And I brought him out to Hollywood. And even in the rehearsal period, I, do, I did not have to run a foot of film. But since we were set up and I had a set ready and a cameraman and all that, I tested him. But I knew in the rehearsal period he could do it. So when it, the minute I saw him work on the scene, he was in. That was it. In the scene here at the Toronto Film mm -hmm. Festival, where he does what I call the hip ghost story for the kids, mm -hmm. um, the scene at the conclusion of it, the audience just burst into spontaneous applause, and it was a really thrilling moment to be in the theater and, and be a part of that. And I think I was among the first to clap as well. But when he was doing that scene, Mr. Mulligan, how much of a continuous role did you have on that particular scene? In other words, mm. I think people know that scenes are done in bits and yeah, pieces. Not that one. Couldn't have been. It, we, there was no other way to do it. Every time. I changed angle or changed the size of the lens, if the full shot to here, to here. Every time we did it, Richard had to start at the beginning and go all the way through. Because there was no other way to do that. You cannot break it up. 
It's literally three pages of monologue. Very hard thing to do. It's a difficult thing to do. But fortunately, Richard, who is a, a schooled actor, an incredibly well-trained actor, a, and an intelligent one, who's done Shakespeare, he had no terror of it. <laughs> he was, he went at it with great gusto and enormous courage and enormous vitality and a great sense of humor and just did it. I think the only comparable thing I can think of at this moment, Mr. Mulligan, is when Spencer Tracy did his long scene in uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. I would say this, in a sense, there is some sort of parallel. Yeah, and I think it has the same problem. It poses the same problems for the actor, but in the hands of a good actor, like a Mr. Tracy and the young Mr. Gear, it, it can happen because a director can't help. I mean, he can help only by setting the stage and making the actor as comfortable as possible and giving them room to play in and to suggest from time to time. But the actor has to do it. Mr. Mulligan, you have directed and worked with just almost the most prestigious names among actors, Laurence Olivier, mm -hmm. Gregory Peck, uh, Steve McQueen, a great film mm -hmm. presence, uh, Robert Redford, um, and of course now Richard Gere. And they're all different personalities. They all have a different way of coming ac across mm -hmm. on the screen. And yet, I wonder from you, sir, is there any one common thing that they all have? I think there's, a, there's one common thing that all good actors share, and that is that they love to do it. You say, if they have that, where they really want to do it, it's, it, that's what's called magic. Whatever it is that sits in an actor that makes him capable of making you believe, and it's their need to want you to believe that makes it happen. And you say, that's, that's that common bond that all good actors and actresses share. Mr. Mulligan, could you direct or would you direct an actor that you personally loathed? I'd have great difficulty doing that. I don't think I could do that. Because most actors I love, I really like them. I mean, they're good people. I like being around them. I like watching them do what they do. God, I, for the chance to work with good actors, I'd pay to be on a set. Uh, just as you know, I can sit in the theater or sit in a movie house and applaud good work. So it's a big kick to be able to sit there and work with them and get to know them, become friends. That's part of the joy of being a director. Mr. Mulligan, thank you very much for this interview today. This has been a joy. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Excellent interview. I love what you said about 